All right. Today we have a very special message for all ages. It will be on your screen so the kids don't have to come up, but you know, you're great where you are. All right. It's a special Christmas story called The Latka Who Couldn't Stop Screaming. This is by Lemony Snicket. And if that tells you anything, well, you're probably more ready for it than everyone else. <laughs> This story ends in someone's mouth, but it begins in a tiny village more or less covered in snow. The snow had fallen during the long night, during which children had pressed their faces to the windows, looking for a glimpse of a man who they suspected of bringing them wonderful gifts. But instead, they heard a terrible noise from a certain cottage in the neighboring arrondissement a word which here means a place where something was being born. This cottage was already regarded with some suspicion, as it was the only place not covered with flashing colored lights at this time of year. The thing that was being born was a latka, a word which here means potato pancake. Latkas are a traditional part of the celebration of Hanukkah, a holiday commemorating a miraculous Jewish military victory. Latkes are, uh, excuse me, nearly everything in the world is born screaming, and the latka was no exception. Even though the latka wasn't conceived and born the way you and I were conceived and born, but was instead fashioned from grated potatoes, chopped onion, beaten eggs, and a dash or two of salt. Once these ingredients were properly mixed, the latka was slapped into a pan full of olive oil, heated to a very high temperature. And this is when it began to scream. We are entering the audience participation portion of this story. Are you prepared? You will see your cue on the screen. I will join you. Ah! Wait, it's not done. Last time. Ah! The latka was suffering so much that it leapt out of the hot pan and out the window of the cottage and began to run screaming down the boulevard. Are you ready? Ah! Laura, no, <laughs> we get to stop. This may seem like unusual behavior for a potato pancake, but this is a Christmas story. <laughs> in which things tend to happen that would never occur in real life. <laughs> the latka ran past a row of flashing colored lights, which hung from the rain gutters of a less suspicious cottage. What's all the ruckus, said the lights in unison. We are the ones who are supposed to be dominating the neighborhood with our cheerful glow. I was just thrown into a pot of boiling, a pan of boiling oil, the latka cried in reply. Can you believe it? Yes, said the flashing colored lights, but we can't imagine why. Because I'm a latka, the latka said. The olive oil reminds us of the oil used to rededicate the temple of following the defeat of Antiochus at the hands of the Maccabees. The oil was only supposed to last for one night, but there was a miracle, and it lasted for eight. And besides, it makes my skin crispy and brown. So, said the colored lights, you're basically hash browns. <laughs> Maybe you could be served alongside a nice Christmas ham. I am not hash browns, cried the latka. I'm something completely different. Ready? Ah! We'll make you do it twice. <laughs> you could. Ah! I love it. <sighs> the latka rounded the corner and found itself face to face with a candy cane which wrinkled its red and white nose at the latka in distaste. I'm trying to sprinkle the uh, night air with my peppermint scent, the candy cane said. Your mouth-watering smell, not to mention all that yelping, is spoiling the effect. My mouth-watering smell is part of the cozy feeling of Hanukkah, the latka replied. It reminds us that things are better now than they were in 175 BCE, when my people were not allowed to practice their religion. 
In order to study the Torah, they had to hide out in caves, and when they heard Greek soldiers coming, they pretended they were gambling with a small spinning top called a dreidel. Sort of like Joseph and Mary hiding out in the manger, said the candy cane. Someone should write a Christmas carol about you. I am not part of Christmas, cried the latka. It's a totally different thing. The screams of the latka grew quieter and quieter as the pancake ran out of the village into the surrounding forest. Its utter fury was unabated. A word here which means the latka was still very annoyed at the objects to whom it had spoken. But it was quite tired, and so it decided to rest for a few minutes beneath the branches of a little pine tree. The pine tree was napping, but woke up at the sound of an object plopping down at its feet. Are you a present? the pine tree asked. Presents are pretty much the only thing allowed to sit beneath me during this time of year. The latka sighed. <sighs> Presents aren't really a big part of Hanukkah, it said in a voice hoarse from screaming. There's nothing wrong with giving gifts to loved ones, of course, but it's more important to light the candles for eight consecutive nights to commemorate the miracle in the temple and the miracle of victory even when you're thoroughly outnumbered, so you shouldn't give up hope. Plus Santa Claus, said the pine tree. <sighs> the latka was too exhausted to scream. <laughs> Santa Claus has nothing to do with it, the latka said. Christmas and Hanukkah are completely different things. But different things can often blend together, said the pine tree. Let me tell you a funny story about pagan rituals. <laughs> But before the pine tree could begin its story, a family came trooping through the snow, searching the forest carefully. We shouldn't have waited until the last minute to get ready for the holiday, said the father in the family, who was holding an axe. We will never find a good one. You shouldn't give up hope, said the mother, and pointed at the pine tree. Look, it's perfect, said the daughter. Beautiful, agreed the son. Such a marvelous shape, said the mother. And its skin looks so crispy, said the father, and reached down and scooped up the latka from the snow. We'll need to reheat it, of course, but this will be perfect for Hanukkah dinner, with a topping of applesauce, sour cream, maybe jam. I'll refry it in oil, said the mother, to remind us of the dedication of the temple. And the triumph of the Maccabees over Antiochus, added the daughter. After hiding in caves all that time, the son chimed in. The father smiled down at the latka in his mitten and then looked at the other hand. What was I thinking bringing this axe? He said to himself. The family strolled back to the village, walking past all the cottages with their flashing colored lights, smiling politely at the candy canes until they reached their own home. They carried the latka into the house, which was warm and cozy, and sat down at the table lit with the flickering candles of a menorah, or Hanukkiah, which is a branched candelabra designed specifically for the holiday. It's very frustrating to not be understood in this world. If you say one thing and keep being told that you mean something else, it can make you want to scream. But somewhere in the world, there is a place for all of us, whether you are an electric form of decoration, a peppermint-scented sweet, a source of timber, or a potato pancake. On a cold, snowy night, everyone and everything should be welcomed somewhere. And the latka was welcomed into a home full of people who understood what a latka is and how it fits into its particular holiday. And then they ate it. Thank you. <laughs>